Bang! Yeah. Okay. Sort of related. This is the Big Bang Marshall. So this has a three-year warranty. It is an MSI motherboard for gaming. It uses the B3 revision chipset, which means that it doesn't have the SATA 2 bug that plagued the original P67 boards, and it supports Intel Core i7, Core i5, and Core i3 processors on the LGA 1155 platform. Crossfire X and SLI technology are both supported by this particular motherboard. And this is all about gaming. Check out that board. It looks awesome but we'll look at the board more later let's look at the features first so here we go it features the military class 2 concept from msi which means you got super ferrite chokes uh highly conductive tantalum core capacitors as well as solid capacitors for up to a 10 year lifetime on this particular board top stability and quality that's good ultimate 3d gaming performance you can see they got four graphics cards installed on it right here okay usb 3.0 and sata 6 3 gigabit or sata 3 6 gigabit per second click bios which means it has a uefi bios which is fully compatible with your mouse for changing all of your bios settings and inner workings and whatnots okay finally uh this i already outlined when we were talking about military class 2 sound blaster x5 mb2 so it features eax advanced i don't know what mb2 stands for if anyone knows what mb2 stands for please leave it in the comments and somebody thumbs it up please so we can all see it next on the back we have dr moss three in one server grade mosfets MSI has been using these for a number of generations now, and they keep stepping up their game, providing better power delivery to your CPU with every generation of products. Superpipe is something I'm a big fan of. Uh, it probably performs better, but really it just looks sweet because it's got big old fat, thick heat pipes. OC Genie one second overclocking. This is another feature I'm actually a big fan of. You just press the button and it overclocks, and then you can grow into the more advanced overclocking features of the board that you choose. OC Dashboard is kind of useful. I have one with my big bang x power you can like press the button and change the b clock and whatnot 24 phase dr moss pwm so 24 power phases on this board is it overkill yes is it cool yes eight pcie 16x slots is it overkill yes is it necessary no is it cool yes multi bios so we have multiple bios chips on this particular board pcie ceasefire is what they're calling their switches for turning on or off your pcie slots this allows you to more easily diagnose your uh any video card issues or display issues you may be having with your motherboard dual eight pin cpu power connectors allow you to deliver a whole lot of juice to your cpu should you desire and let's go ahead and open up the box shall we First we have dramatic pause, accessories, including a big start guide, which is the size of me and the size of the board, but bigger. It shows you all the whatnots that are on it. Okay. More of the exactly the same stuff that was already on the packaging. Thank you, MSI. All right. So let's put this over here just in case we can't, you know, see the board well enough on our own. All right. Next we have the OC dashboard. Right there, plus minus mode. You can use it to change a bunch of different settings. It plugs in via this. Okay, it's actually kind of useful. I have used it in the past. There's the cable for it. Okay, next we have one of those eSATAs as well as uh, an adapter plug from the Molex power here, which plugs into your power supply to dual SATA powers. So this is actually a really cool little thing because you can just take bare hard drives and plug them into the back of your system and easily access the data with the included eSATA cable. Is that an eSATA cable? It's not even an eSATA cable, is it? What in the heck? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, eSATA to SATA cable and then um, this particular little power adapter. All right, good feature. Next, we have a USB 3.0. IO panel, as well as another one. So you can plug in two via the internal headers for up to four additional ports coming out the back of your case. We've got one, two, three, four SATA 3, six gigabit per second uh, SATA cables, as well as a couple of uh, Molex power to SATA powers. Uh, we have an IO shield. We have uh, V checkpoints. Okay, so these can be plugged in to check voltages. We've got the M connector, which allows you to plug in your front USB, your speakers, your front power, all that good stuff a little bit more easily. SLI connector. No idea, guys. Sorry. Looks like a pass-through for something. So there's a little rubber grommet, and then there's a little spot to put the rubber grommet, and something probably passes through to the back. Okay. Uh, quick installation guide. 
Drivers and Utilities, 3D Mark 11 serial, very nice inclusion, so you can benchmark your new high performance system as soon as you get your Big Bang Marshall set up. Here's an overclocking guide. Look at that. That's kind of neat. I've never seen this included before. Overview, some OC info about the new P67 platform, military class materials, multi-graphics cards, gaming design, PCIe ceasefire. So they show you how to use the overclocking features of this board. That's actually a very helpful inclusion because a lot of guys produce uh, overclocking boards, but not a whole lot of them actually document in such a detailed manner what to do. Huh. So it supports up to four-way ATI Crossfire X and NVIDIA SLI. So it does not support, uh, it does not support, uh, as, who, as well as, uh, yeah, it does not support greater than two-way NVIDIA SLI because it actually uses a Lucid Hydrologix chip in order to get all those PCIe lanes split out rather than using an NF200 chip. Software applications as well as the Big Bang Marshall user guide. The box got a little bit demented in shipping, but we're not going to take off any marks for that one today. I mean, I never take marks off a product. That's just not really something I say, oh, marks off for this. So I won't be taking off any marks. It's okay, just let it fall. It's all good. Okay, the Big Bang Marshall. This is a massive, massive motherboard. So actually, give me two seconds. I'm going to go find a board to compare for you guys. This is an XL ATX board, which makes an ATX board look like an MATX board. So this is a standard size motherboard. And this is not a standard size motherboard. So you will need a special case in order to run your Big Bang Marshall motherboard, if you get one, which you lucky dog, good work. Okay, I'm just gonna take off the one second overclocking sticker so we can have a more clear look at the motherboard itself. So why don't we start right here in the middle with the socket. This is our LGA 1155 socket. It uses a LOT socket, which is good, I'm to, led to understand. Okay, we have our 24 phase power design all around it, but you can actually see that all of the heat sinks, all of the power components, all that stuff is actually very low profile around that socket. So you should be able to install some pretty exotic cooling solutions on this board without any clearance issues whatsoever. I love the overall look of MSI's recent uh, MOSFET Northbridge uh, heat sinks. Look at this super pipe. It's like ridiculous. It's like, look at it compared to like a thick stubby finger. It's like huge, it's like awesome. I love super pipe. Probably does nothing for performance, but it's there and it's cool. So let's not knock it. All right. Let's have a look here. So we've got our two eight pin CPU power connectors. Okay. Moving along, we have our where is the CPU? Oh yeah, our CPU fan connector. We've got support for dual channel DDR3 memory. Okay, this allows us to turn on and off PCI graphics one, two, three, or four. Okay, so this is on, so clearly this is not on. Okay, we have, uh, moving down, we have our voltage checkpoints, which hopefully there's some documentation somewhere in the motherboard manual or something like that for which ones are which. We have our 24 pin power connector in its ideal location along the right hand edge of the board. And we've also got a couple of USB three front panel connectors. So these can be used to plug into the front of your case or into those included back panel brackets. SATA three, six gigabit per second port. So we have Two running off of the Intel chipset, as well as two running off a third party, looks like a Marvell chipset. And then we have four SATA 2, three gigabit per second ports as well. Front panel USB, this is an innovation. Here they are at the front of the board. I like that. So this is actually closer to your front panel than having it all along the bottom edge where we would typically find USB 2 headers. I like that a lot, actually. We've got a power connector, reset, or power connector, power switch, reset switch. We've also got a OC Genie button as well as a multi BIOS button. So presumably this will select one of our multi BIOS chips to boot from. And this one is going to one touch overclock your system. Here we have our uh, post indicator LED. So that'll tell you if you have any problems with your board when you're trying to boot up. And finally moving along, we have our front panel connectors. So that's your power switch, power LED, all of that good stuff. We have uh, some more LED stuff. We've got Firewire. We've got front panel audio. There's the XFi MB2 sticker that appears to be on the board. Okay, PCI Express slots. So, eight. 
Because this is a non-standard board, it is actually nine PCI slots high, but they're not using the first one that there is potential for here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight PCIe 16X slots. However, they do not all run at PCIe 16X. So let us pull up the manual and we'll go through that for you. So running in two-way mode, you would use the top PCIe 1X, or top PCIe 1X, top PCIe 16X slot, and then the one, two, three, and then the fourth PCIe 1X slot. So that means if you're running two-way, you could all you could use even triple slot graphics cards, uh, such as the ASUS um, triple slot GTX 470. So remember, it supports crosswire, fire, and SLI in two-way mode. In three-way mode, you would use this one, this one, and this one, running in 8, 8, and 16x mode. And in four-way, you would use this one, this one, this one, and this one, all running in 8x mode. So for the full guide, you can actually consult this. I mean, this is fantastic. Their little overclocking guide here to find out what bandwidth each slot is going to run at in the various graphics configuration modes. Okay, so here we have a, an auxiliary power connector. This is a six pin PCIe power connector. So if you are gonna load it up with graphics cards, it's definitely a good idea to plug that in to keep your 24 pin power connector from getting fried from so much current running through it to power these cards. Other than that, I think that's pretty much everything there is to say about the Big Bang Marshall. On the back, you find more power circuitry. You find your standard backplate as well as not a whole lot else. You can see that all of the coolers are held on with screws. So that means you don't have to deal with any stupid push pins, which I hate. And I really do prefer to see these spring-loaded screws because you won't run into any issues with them getting worn out if you ever have to take them off and put them back on, say to replace a thermal compound or whatever else the case may be. On the back, yeah. Yes, that is eight USB 3.0 ports. Yes, this board supports a total of no fewer than 12 USB 3.0 ports. Pretty sweet, okay? So we've got a PS2 uh, keyboard mouse combo port. We've got uh, op digital audio out in coaxial and optical flavors. Firewire, eSATA times two. Gigabit Ethernet times two, as well as 7.1 audio. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the MSI Big Bang Marshall. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.